Hello, this is Hermann Osterwick, and we're going to talk about a DICOM viewer and validator. We want to talk about how to install and configure it, and then how to use it. In medicine, there, there will be a problem with the DICOM image. Maybe it comes up incorrectly on your monitor, or it is rejected by your PAC system. So what do you do? Well, we have a DICOM viewer that is in the open source, and we can uh, look at the image header using that viewer, or we can run a validator of the image header to find out whether there's any DICOM problems in the header. So this presentation will uh, show you how to inspect it and how to validate the header and saving the result file and to talk about some additional resources. Now our first challenge is how to get this image into a test environment. And the test environment could be, for example, the laptop where we downloaded all the tools. Now uh, let's say the problem comes here at the workstation and we might be able to burn a CD and enter it in that way by reading the image on our test environment. Another capability might be maybe to dump or send the file or query the packs for having that image. But anyway, we need the image on our laptop or our computer where we have a test environment, and then we're going to do the inspection and validation. The tool that we're going to use for looking at the image header is called Clear Canvas. It's uh, an open source product. You can download from uh, uh, this particular website, clearcanvas.ca. It's uh, built in Canada, very nice utility, and you can download the free version. It's uh, totally free, and you can use that to look at the DICOM header. And then the next tool that we're going to download as well will be the DICOM validator itself. That will be the DVTK, DICOM validation toolkit. So it is available from dvtk.org. And you need to make sure that you don't only uh, download the analysis, but also the um, directory of the definition files. There's a, a whole file that you need to install against which the validation will, will do this checking called definition files. Now, when you have installed Clear Canvas, you will see this particular screen and basically have two tabs, an Explorer tab, um, which basically allows you to browse on my computer and you can pick that particular file that you want and bring it up. Now, if you bring up a file, this is a normal uh, CT image. Uh, you can look at the information in the header. And the tool that we then use for the inspection will be Tools. And uh, basically, most viewers have this uh, tool available. Uh, it might be called a little bit different. In this case, Tools Utilities, and there's a button called DICOM Editor. If you click on DICOM Editor, you'll see all the information on the header. Now, for example, the patient name, which is on 1010. Oops, a little bit down. Um, right here, 1010 will be touch be PPDI. Uh, the patient sex will be male, and so on. Now, if you have a problem, we do exactly the same thing, right? Here's this problem image. You see that it's totally distorted. If there is a problem, we do exactly the same thing. So let's bring up this image. Um, this is called a John Smith image, and you see it's totally distorted, so there might be some issues wrong with the patient header. And there's some other weird stuff going on and unknown sex and some different information for the uh, uh, AIDS as well. So again, we do exactly the same thing. We go Utilities, DICOM Editor, see in the DICOM header what might be wrong. We might have to adjust a little bit the display. And after we've done that, we see, for example, that the patient sex, the case, right, is U. It happens to be an invalid value. Uh, the accession number, 850, this is right here, has backslashes. It might be a little bit hard to see, but basically it's 376 backslash. 52 backslash 9203. This is also invalid. And uh, if you go down a little bit, you might notice that uh, in the UID, right here, study instance UID, is a frame of reference UID, but the study instance UID has a double zero, which is also illegal. Now, this is some of the obvious things that you might know, but a better way of figuring out what is wrong is by using a DICOM validator. So you don't have to be a DICOM expert, but basically the validator will do the work for you. So we'll do that next. 
So when you run and, and install the DICOM validation tool, you will see this uh, blank screen coming up. Uh, so the first thing what we need to do is we need to load the definition file, and we do that by do file open, and basically in the directory that is installed, there should be an example file. So we click on this example file open, and basically what is then done is download the whole last list of sample transactions and sample scenarios that you can test against. Now in our case, we're not going to go for all of these. We're only going to use the validation for the media. So we're going to go to media session. But before, okay, do that. After we click on media session, before we actually download the file, there's another thing we need to do. We need to specify the subclass of the image that we want to validate against. So when you click, click on subclass, then you should see this list of all the different image types or subclasses that are read from the directory files. So if your directory files or your definition files are not loaded correctly, that will be definitely missing here. So the things we want to select will be the uh, CT image storage subclass. So it's called uh, a CT image st uh, storage definition. And we also want to uh, highlight the uh, definition files. which is called file meta definition, which is the DICOM part 10 header, uh, which is the meta header that goes in front of the image in case it was stored on a CD. So now we're ready to do the validation. Again, we go to media session and then we do right click and we see this menu coming up. So after we do right mouse click, we do validate media files. And I have this particular image that came up with an error in our viewer. Um, we open it here using the validator. We don't want to uh, um, uh, store the results files to a backup files. In case you want to save that, we say yes, but in this case we want to use do no. And then we see the results of the validation. Now if you scroll down, we see that there are quite a lot of errors. Anything in red uh, is a incorrect validation. And in this case, there were 10 errors and two warnings. And we'll go over those details in, in a minute. Um, you can also look at the uh, activity logging uh, in this particular file as well. So let's go to a look at the validation results. Um, so many errors that we also already noticed when we did the visual inspection. For example, patient sex was unknown. Uh, it's actually definitely... Uh, flagged as an incorrect entry. Uh, the accession number is where the validator is complaining against as well. It actually says that it has three out of value multiplicity of one. That means he sees the backslashes as separators. Uh, the study instance UID has a double zero. It's also being complained about. So you see all the errors come up. Um, patient AIDS has a conflict here with the length. It should be 54Y instead of YRS. So the value should be four instead of six. And then if you go down a little bit, you see some so also warnings. So warning is not necessarily an error, but something to be concerned about. For example, modality 64 slash CT, and basically that should be a CT um, based on the uh, definition file and uh, the defined terms in the DICOM standard. So it says warning, this is not really a, an error, but it could potentially mess up your hanger protocols or work list or whatever it is. So you see... Everything is clearly identified. And now what we can do, we can save that, file save, right? And we can take that information and send it to our vendor or manufacturer and say, listen, you have a problem. Or if the vendor was not the culprit, maybe it was an incorrect entry or there was an incorrect mapping with 807, uh, 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 broker or modality workers provider, we can do more investigation. So... There are find quite a few tutorials online uh, about DVTK in the same website, so you check them out. There are also uh, a lot of ways to configure yourself and yourself your DVTK and do some programming. You also, in addition to that, you can also, um, if you want more information about DICOM, check out our website. If you uh, want to understand a little bit more about the contents of the DICOM header, we'll spend a lot of time in our classes going over those. And I always value your comments and feedback. Thank you very much for your attention and enjoy.